Hi everybody and welcome to Lingves. I'm Laura and I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard expressions such as easy peasy, late alligator, holy moly? I'm pretty sure you have because it's very common. You know, English native speakers love playing with the sound of words and making this kind of rhyming phrases to be used in familiar situations. And because these phrases are so common, it would be very nice that you learn them and try to add them to your everyday vocabulary. So today we're going to learn about six of the most famous English rhyming expressions that also happen to be binomials. But what are binomials? Binomials are two words, by, connected with a conjunction, which is normally and, but it can also be or. Why are binomials so awesome? Because you use only three words to express a lot of information, because it's a fantastic way to avoid repeating the same phrases and the same vocabulary over and over again, and because they make your English sound a lot more natural. So stay with me for a while and learn about the six more useful rhyming binomials that native speakers of English use all the time. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet and ring the bell to be notified with our newest lessons. And our first binomial is the hassle and bustle. As you can see, the sounds are very similar. Hassle, bustle. Only the first sound at the beginning changes. My example using this binomial is I can't stand the hassle and bustle of big cities. But what does it mean? The hassle and bustle refers to the busy and frenetic activity and atmosphere that you can find in places which are full of people, full of life, full of movement, such as big cities, shopping centers, concerts, the office. Other examples using this binomial can be I can't concentrate at work with all the hassle and bustle going on around me. A lot of people moving, noise, I can't concentrate. Or because of COVID-19, we should avoid the hassle and bustle of concerts. Too many people, big crowds, a lot of activity, no good. I love concerts, but all this hassle and bustle at the moment is not very safe. I'd rather go home. Our second binomial is wear and tear. Notice again how both words rhyme, wear and tear. My example using it in a sentence is, seat covers and buses often look very old because of all the wear and tear. Can you guess what it means? The wear and tear refers to the damage or change that is caused to an object when it is being normally used. For example, imagine that you buy a pair of runners. At the very beginning, they look new, fresh, fantastic. But what happens after you've been using them for a whole year? They don't look that new anymore. They start looking old, even a bit broken. Well, that's the wear and tear. Other examples using wear and tear are I've bought an amazing second-hand sofa. No signs of wear and tear. That means the sofa looks very new, not damaged, fresh. Or this is my favorite book. I've read it countless times. You can tell for all the wear and tear. Our binomial number three is high and dry. Again, feel how both words are very similarly pronounced. High and dry. My example using it is My roommate left me high and dry when she suddenly moved out without any previous notice. Can you guess what it means? We use this expression when someone does something which is not convenient for you and actually puts you in a difficult situation. We normally use it with the verb leave, someone leaves you high and dry. For example, when you are promised something or when you have a deal with someone, but they decide not to do it at the very last minute, they leave you high and dry. Other examples can be, my car broke down and left me high and dry in the middle of nowhere. My car put me in a very difficult situation. Or, my friend left me high and dry at the party, so I went home. She was with me, we were fine, and all of a sudden she vanished. She left me high and dry. Hmm. 
Yes, Anna? Laura, where, where are you? You left me high and dry. Where were you? I looked for you everywhere. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. I just went for a few drinks with some friends and I lost track of time. I'm really, really sorry. Our binomial number four is fair and square. Notice how both words rhyme, fair and square. My example of it in a sentence is your team won fair and square. Congratulations. What does it mean? The expression fair and square is used to describe something that is achieved honestly and undoubtedly. In this case, your team won the match in a very honest manner, without cheating and doing a very good job. We normally use this expression obviously for games and competitions. Other examples are the president won the election fair and square. So whether you like it or not, she's official in charge now. Or I picked a raffle ticket at random and I won fairly and squarely. And the winner is number 10. I won fair and square, okay? Beginner's luck, I guess. Our binomial number five is make or break. This one uses the conjunction or instead of and, but it doesn't matter because again, both words rhyme. Make or break. My example using it is, that movie will be a make or break for him as a director. What do you think it means? Now, meaning, when something is a make or break, it will either bring you great success or complete failure. This one is commonly used to talk about money, career or love. Think about, for example, one of these talent shows like Britain's Got Talent, X Factor. People participate in have only a few minutes to show how good they are. If they succeed, they can become rich and famous. If they fail, they may look stupid in front of an audience. That's a make or break moment. Other examples are, it's make or break time for the company. If the company doesn't make the right decisions, mm -mm, it will make it. Or, each interview that you attend is a make or break situation and you must do your best. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. This job interview is so important. It's a great opportunity, really. Um, this is a make or break moment. Miss Alcaraz, please. Yes. If you don't want to be as nervous as the girl before, why don't you have a look at the lesson up here and learn how to be confident and succeed at a job interview in English. And now our last binomial is odds and ends. Notice again how both words rhyme, odds and ends. Using it in a sentence, we can say, I already took most of the big things and I brought them to the new house but there are still a few odds and ends that I need to pick up. What does it mean? Odds and ends are small items, normally different and not belonging to the same set, which are not important or of little value. Those things that we all have at home and often make us wonder whether we should keep so many of them or not, those are odds and ends. Some more examples are, there were lots of odds and ends in the attic, but nothing of real value many different small items probably to be sorted. Or, I can never find what I need among all the odds and ends in my drawer. Where is it? Uh-huh, somewhere here. It must be around here. Where is it? I have too many odds and ends. I have to <laughs> sort this out. Where is it? So today we've learned six essential rhyming binomials that native speakers of English use all the time. Let's refresh our memory, okay? We've seen hustle and bustle, wear and tear, high and dry, fair and square, make or break, odds and ends. There are lots of binomials in English, okay? And many of them are actually old-fashioned or only appearing in course books. But the ones we picked for you today are the ones people use all the time. And to continue practicing what people use all the time, 
have a look at a link I left in the description box for you, as well as follow us on our social media for more challenges, resources, games, and much, much more. If you found this video interesting and useful, like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it yet. And in the meantime, while you wait for new videos to come, have a look at this pronunciation lesson on the most commonly mispronounced words. Check if you have problems with them as well. And this other lesson where you can learn tips and what not to do if you want to learn English efficiently, fast and in a very enjoyable way. Thanks for being with me today and practice this, enjoy and share.